everyone. Well, it's enough time for another episode of Astrology Now with astrologer Babula Clement and myself, Cheryl Gottschall. So, Babula, we've got a lot to talk about this uh, with this uh, lunar eclipse that's coming up in Pisces. Um, but you know what? I just wanted to start off by saying I'm really coming to understand and appreciate that grand um, cosmic narrative that astrology weaves, you know, like each... Um, how can you say celestial tale and i'm really saying this in relation to i've just like just recently went oh stellions it's the whole story it's not just a, it extends beyond the confines of those individual planetary movements and it sort of weaves this bigger cosmic tapestry um and i was thinking about the the new moon and like two weeks ago we had that new moon in virgo which you know was about purification, purifying our diet, our living space, etc., our connections, um, and and setting things up in readiness for us. So now that the Pisces moon comes along and and does its thing, and I, I really starting to really appreciate that. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful. It, it is fascinating when you really start delving into astrology, isn't it? And I've seen that over the years, you know, when I've run beginners classes and 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 I just have witnessed, you know, people just going, oh, my God, this is so much more than I realised because they're starting to see how all of this is actually playing out in real experience, you know, yeah. and yeah. things start to make sense and they, you know, begin to see things from a different angle in a different way. Mm, and there's this long-term long sort of, parts of it and these shorter parts of daily stuff and then there's stuff in between and it's just it's just amazing that's right and there's all these cycles within cycles you know there's the fast moving cycles and the bigger ones and then the enormous cycles like this incredibly complex cosmic clock yeah you know all ticking away and um interacting all those different cycles are all interacting with each other and mm. you know over short periods of time over long 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 periods of time it's fascinating mm. it never gets boring no i don't think i've ever heard an astrologer say they're bored by astrology no. <laughs> don't see how you could be but you know like hats off to you for teaching us who attend your astrology classes to to lead us up to that point where we come to that understanding, you know. Right. Yeah, it's great. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Oh, my, you're very welcome. I I love it. I love teaching astrology. Mm. It's it's very um, it's very fulfilling and rewarding. You know, it's it's yeah, and it's fun. Yeah, you enjoy it. So you're going to kick us off by talking about the the moon. I am. So on September the 18th, which is Wednesday in Australia, on the eastern coast of Australia at 12.34 p.m., so just after midday, uh, we have the full moon, which of course occurs every month, but this time because the sun and the moon, both opposite each other, are also in alignment with the north and south nodes of the moon. Mm. It's not a total lunar eclipse because there's a bit of distance between the sun, moon, the nodes, but they're absolutely close enough to form an eclipse. So we won't see it only because for us the eclipse is happening in the daytime. Mm. Um, but people who live in parts of the world where the eclipse will be occurring at night, um, if you know, we'll be able to go out and watch it if the skies are clear. Um, so eclipses, my favourite description, which I remember reading in a book years and years ago, my favourite description of eclipses, a lunar eclipse is a full moon on steroids and a solar eclipse is a new moon on steroids. So it's it's the the full moon with just a hell of a lot more energy because, you know, what's happening is that the um, the Earth is passing between the Sun and the Moon are opposite each other, and the Earth passing between them. And the light of the Sun is blocked out by the Earth. Don't worry about the different sizes; it's all to do with distance from each mm. other. And so there's this because it's a partial lunar eclipse. It there's this kind of fainter shadow across the Moon, so the Moon won't be completely blacked out, but is definitely for those who can see it, you know, a shadow passing across the moon. So 
I mean, there's so much symbolism in that. You know, the moon is very much about our personal feelings, our, our the way we experience life in a very personal and intimate way, our biology, you know, our emotional body and so on. Um, and so, you know, it has these eclipses have a big impact. And even, you know, the ancients thousands of years ago who were watching the skies, they were tracking eclipses and making all kinds of predictions based on eclipses. Like their understanding of how eclipses work was pretty phenomenal. Yeah, I was... And they were... Oh, sorry. Go on. I was going to say, I was reading um, that in ancient astrology, eclipses were seen as portals opening into past lives and especially lunar eclipses because it's thought the the veils, if you want to say it that way, yes. were actually thin during this time. So past life memories and lessons and wounds could be more easily accessible. Exactly. It's, it's as though it opens... I like that. You know, the veils are thinner and, and something of the unconscious opens up. And so very often things come to the surface that we might have buried or yeah. ignored and things come up and, and our emotions and our feelings. And this full moon lunar eclipse is in the sign of Pisces, mm. conjunct the planet Neptune, mm. which is the planet that rules Pisces. So Many listening to this will be aware that um, Neptune moved into Pisces in 2011 and has been slowly making its way through its own sign all these years and is now coming to the end. So so the, the full moon eclipses at 25 degrees of Pisces and Neptune's at 28 degrees. That's very close. So it's like a double dose of that. Mm. mystical water energy of soul, of feelings, of heightened sensitivity, of emotions coming to the surface, of things coming up, like it could be past life memories. It could be interesting, unusual things coming up in our dreams. Mm. Um, conversations with people that bring up things from the past that we may have forgotten about, you know, even from from childhood. Um it's it's not going to be easy to hold on to that stuff because because not just only is it in Pisces, it's conjunct Neptune. Yes, yeah. You know, and the only way to actually be with that is to surrender and go with it and open, allow ourselves to open. And if we have time and space available, you know, to take some quiet time to feel into yeah. what we're experiencing. I always think of um, Pisces, Neptune, uh, both of them are, um, you know, things can be a bit murky with that. You know, it's not terribly clear. It'd be difficult to clarify situations or um, because Pisces really has no boundaries or limits, so sometimes it's hard to map something out or or portray something in the way that it actually is because you can't actually see it clearly yourself, you know. Yes, it, it, that's exactly right. So the opposite sign of Virgo is all about precision and analysis and mm. being specific, but Pisces is the opposite to that. Yeah. And so the only way we can really understand and experience and navigate, if you like, this energy, navigates like navigating the seas, um, is through... <laughs> You know, is is through feeling and intuition and sensing and just going, you know, like I'm just feeling, and the mind might go, well, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. but in Pisces, the equipment is about, and the way of processing it is all about the feeling. So lots of feelings and emotions may arise for people. Yeah. And it might even feel like a tidal wave or a tidal wave of stuff coming up from the unconscious or a tidal wave of emotions and Someone may be, you know, in the middle of the kitchen cooking a meal and suddenly feel overwhelmed and start crying and not knowing why. Yeah. Um, so it's really helpful if we can take some time and space and or maybe have, you know, have healing sessions during a period like this, meditation, listening to beautiful music. Yeah. Whatever is someone's, anyone's um way of connecting with themselves in a more spiritual way it might be through prayer or art or music or just being really quiet mm. yeah, I, I sort of equate it to um swimming in the ocean you know you're you just or, or if it, say you have a ship on the ocean or a boat on the ocean I'm sorry fishermen 
and people who have boats. I know there's a big thing between boats and ships, but, um, you know, like if you don't have an engine, <laughs> you just have to let go and go with the flow. That's right. Uh, if you're swimming in the ocean, you've got to be careful you don't get caught in the rip, you know, um, and it sort of equates to when we have times in our lives where we're trying to control things, but then, you know, Pisces or Neptune comes along and says, no, nah, that's not going to happen. We're just going to go here. I'm going to go there. I'm going to flow like the, you know, the plants in the in the ocean that sort of move with the currents and the tides. And basically you just got to give up and just accept this, you know, accept that you don't have control of things and, that's right. and just go. <laughs> yeah. And that requires trust and faith, doesn't it? It sure does because we humans overall like to feel like we're in control, you know, that we know what we're doing. We've got the hands on the steering wheel and sometimes mm -hmm. that's what's required, absolutely. But with an energy like this, things can happen to change the course of what we had planned for that day or for your life even because eclipses are very powerful catalysts. Yeah. Particularly if they're making contact with something in in our own birth chart. Yeah. You know, within a few degrees, if it's quite close to a point in our own birth chart, we might have a planet or an ascendant or something there. And so that eclipse will be experienced more strongly. And it can often come as a situation or an experience or a circumstance that that is a catalyst, mm. something to change. And and often the change is it can be quite strong. Not we've all lived through many eclipses. But sometimes, you know, if we want to track back and, and astrologically do the research to look at eclipses that hit our chart really strongly, very often there's a, oh, that was that mm -hmm. year, I remember, you know. I, I think it, I think for me eclipses in the Australian way of saying thing is, yeah, no. That's right. Yeah, no. That's yeah, right. No. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So it's it's. And and Pisces has, is such a mysterious energy. Mm. And um, so, you know, a, and, and it affects the whole collective. You know, it's the last sign of the zodiac. It's all inclusive of absolutely everything, this mm. sign. You know, mm. it, it represents oneness and states of being that are so expansive. You know, absolutely everything is included. That's mm. a lot. Mm. And um, so... And it's way beyond the personal. So I think with an eclipse like this coming up and a lunar eclipse of the moon, um, there could be some big shifts going on in the collective as well that might seem, you know, often Pisces can feel like it's a bit strange, mm. you know, and I think that's a fair thing. I mean, I'm a Pisces, I can say that. It is a little strange in a way. It's very different to how this 3D world and reality functions and operates. It's like another dimension. Mm. And um, sometimes that can feel overwhelming to the point where, remember, this is also a sign that rules addictions and escape routes. So for some, this could feel so overwhelming, psychically, emotionally, that it might turn to some kind of... Um, addictive substance or behaviour to, to uh, as an escape. And the ultimate form of escape, of course, is to end one's life. And I, I say that because that's the kind of thing that can happen in some cases with an eclipse like this. Mm. It just be, It's too much. I can't do this anymore. Mm. Um, and apart from that, eclipses are a time often when, you know, souls do depart. It might be through they've had a long illness and this is the 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 moment that uh, you know their life comes to an end or it can end in all sorts of ways of course so that's the kind of thing that can happen on an eclipse like this yeah i was just looking at the chart uh flicking it around while you're talking sorry uh and i see the moon's also sextile to uranus and pluto i don't know if you've got any notes on that but um... it is it really is so yeah. You know, if we there, there's the the moon conjunct Neptune at the moment of the eclipse. The moon being exactly mm. opposite the sun in Virgo, 
And there's a sextile to Pluto at the very end of Capricorn and the sextile to Uranus at the end of Taurus, mm. like a little mini grand trine in a way. Yeah. And Pluto. So that I'm glad you brought that up because that brings in like so much more energy. You know, Pluto, Uranus and Neptune are all involved in this eclipse and they are the three big guns, if you like. They're the three outer planets that are all about transformation and mm. evolution and mm. big cosmic forces of energy mm. over which we really don't have any control. Yeah. Um, but the gift of this is, you know, ultimately it's about transcendence and about spiritual awakening and letting go of what we're attached to and what we think we need and discovering that actually, well, I didn't really need that and actually this feels a whole lot better now that that's gone. Yeah, yeah. You know, what, whatever that might be. What triggered me to look at that was when you said global. I think you said global before, and I thought, hmm, because you know, Uranus is global, and Pluto is um, generational um, and transformational. Uh, yeah, I thought, wow, that's that's yeah, big. that's big. Yeah. So, yeah, so these are big energies involved mm. with this. <clears throat> pardon me, this lunar eclipse. Saturn is in Pisces. It's 10 degrees away, but it's kind of just sitting there. It's not directly affecting the eclipse, but it's it's there. It's it is a very um interesting yeah. lunar eclipse, this one. Um well, can I ask you a question? Is Pisces, um, does that relate to suffering? Yes. Okay, so it does. I'm just trying to put all that together in my mind. I was just saying before to, to Barry that, you know, I'm not like you in that I'm not tra trained in this for a very long time, but so I have to take time to weave things together in my mind, how does it all fit? But I was thinking, you know, you've got um, the human condition is like the, the suffering on the planet and that... Um, and then you've got that Uranian energy which wants to bring us all together to heal that in a way. Yes, it's 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 a lot, and there are so many ways to look at that, but yeah. but it's true. We know there's a lot going on on the planet, there's a lot going on in the world everywhere, every single day. Um and I I would suggest that this is this particular full moon would be a good period over those days to perhaps disengage a bit from some of that external noise about what's going on in the in in the public world arena, you know, through media and so on, to take some time out because these outer planets and the sign of Pisces are all about soul mm. and our connection to spirit and whatever that means for people, you know, which is very individual. They really are about that and if we can make some space for us to just connect with that in ourselves and in our life um, and perhaps disconnect a bit from all that outer drama that's going on because there's a lot of it, mm -hmm. um, I think that would be very wise and very helpful. And maybe even if you can get to the sea or get to bodies of water, you know, get the body into water. Mm -hmm. just, you know, walking on the beach with your feet in the water. Um and taking some big deep breaths because I think a lot's being asked of us and one of the things that's being asked of us is that we expand, you know, expand our awareness, expand our consciousness, expand our capacity to feel and take in more and more and more. That's part of our evolution and it's all accelerated now. Mm. And this particular eclipse for some can actually offer an opportunity for like, like a significant shift of consciousness and an opening that could be extremely beautiful because with Pisces, often when there's an expansion, it will often come with tears, mm -hmm. not of sorrow, but because it's just so beautiful and unbelievably incredible right? Mm -hmm. But like words like ecstasy, Pisces is that sign that includes suffering, and the ecstatic experiences of bliss. It's both and all of that. So it is a lot. Yeah, you know, while you're talking, I'm thinking about we had a speaker here at our, our group meeting yesterday 
And he, he before he started speaking, he was talking about how his memory wasn't as good as it used to be before um, the the pandemic, and um, he he and he put it down to post traumatic stress. And I thought, yeah, the whole planet's you know suffering from many people I know. You, they don't say that they're suffering from that, but you can see it playing out in their life. And I'm thinking all of this sort of ties in with that global yes. suffering of that post-traumatic stress disorder syndrome yeah, that we've all felt in some way. And this is a great time for that transformational global healing to, to come into play, isn't it? It, it certainly is. It, it really is. And if we can connect in with perhaps even online, this is happening a lot around the world with different groups, you know, they're meditating together at a certain time or if you have a group of people that you can come together with to connect with on a more spiritual soul level, um, healing sessions with people that mm -hmm. you trust and feel that soul connection with, you know, water, all of these sorts of things are going to really be of great assistance during this time. Mm. Well, something you said, and see, Pisces, it's vaporized. Where did it go? <laughs> Post traumatic stress disorder, the global. Yes, and 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 that feeling of that that feeling of incredible suffering. You know, Pisces is the two fish. Yeah, and um, you know, one has swum down into this human earthly realm and domain which is let's face it often extremely difficult mm. but the other fish is always connected by that silver cord to spirit to god to source mystery whatever is our language for that and that's the that's the challenging task in pisces mm. we've all got pisces somewhere in our chart whether we've got planets in pisces natally or not and when Pisces is up, and early next year the North Node is going to exit Aries and go into Pisces, hmm. there's a lot going on around this whole Pisces story even yeah. over the next year or so. It's been going on all this year. And, and so people are tired, they're exhausted, they're hmm. overwhelmed. Hmm. They're stressed because they're exhausted and overwhelmed and there's just so much, you know. It's like feels like a tidal wave just a tidal wave of stuff coming at us, you know, daily. Mm. So more rest is required, quiet time is required. Mm. That's not always easy in this current life to get that. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of people underestimate the effects of what's happened over the last four years. And, yes. you know, and even though we may have picked ourselves up and gotten on with our lives the way that we do now, the the currents of that are still deeply playing out within us. They are. There's a lot of anxiety, isn't there? Mm. Relationships are going through a lot of stress. Yeah, people still aren't sleeping well. But that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So mm. it, it's very, very strong times that we're in. Um, one of my favourite words for Pisces, and then we'll move on and look at the, the, the coming weeks, is, is fluid. Mm. And I think that's, I think, one of the gifts that's come out of everything that's been happening these last few years is that, I was saying this to someone recently, we're all learning to be very flexible and adaptable and go with the flow and to be fluid. We have to. Mm. We have to if we're going to maintain a sense of sanity and emotional, physical, spiritual well-being, you know, to really keep loosening our attachment to things and be very fluid and open mm. because things keep changing so quickly. And I'm, absolutely that can be very, very stressful and really stir up a lot of anxiety. But that's that's the key here as much as we can, you know, find ways to do that. Um, My camera keeps drifting. Excuse me, folks. Ah, I see. <laughs> it's like it's just... It's just drifting. It's fluid. <laughs> yeah. And and you mentioned about getting caught in a rip earlier. Yeah. And they recommend that if you get caught in a rip, don't swim against the rip. Let go and let the that current take you because it's more powerful than you mm. and it will eventually drop you at shore further down the beach. Mm. Mm. That is what we're talking about. You know, mm. it's... 
And and that's what you said earlier about letting go requires a great deal of trust and faith because every instinct, if you're caught in a rip, is to swim against it yeah. and yeah. get out of it. Mm. But no, the message is let the rip carry you because it will take you back to shore further down. Mm. And all the mystics have said that forever. Mm. You know, it's like going down a river, you know, rather than fighting the current, just let the river take you. And hope to God there's a log across the water. You can grab, grab hold of. <laughs> or you're going to end up far at sea. That's right. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. So um, so on, on the day of the full moon, there is an exact opposition then between Mercury in Virgo. And remember, the sun's in Virgo opposite the moon at the eclipse. But Mercury is at 15 of Virgo opposite that Saturn at 15 of Pisces. So mm. there is this whole kind of polarity of Virgo-Pisces going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> Mer Mercury loves being in Virgo because it is the analytical mind, like switched on, analytical, practical, sensible, figuring out what the issue is, what the problem is, how to make it work better. That axis, though, it reminds me, I'm just getting this message of, um, you know, the eagle. It's got the eye for detail, but it also is way up here in the heavens, you know. That's right. So at any time, and this is where the fluidity comes in, it's being able to see the details down on planet Earth and get down there and get that field mouse and then get back up there and, and be up there in the in the beautiful heavens and, you know, yes. being alone. That's the other thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes, that that's right. Often with this very Neptunian Pisces energy, we feel like we need more space, more personal space, mm. just time alone mm. to help process that feeling of you know overwhelm because then it's an energetic thing so often. Um see, normally I'd be saying Mercury opposite Saturn is a great time for study and analysis, and, th and that could still be true for some people, mm. but um with this Pisces new moon, like that that almost kind of wins out, I think, that Neptune Pisces full moon eclipse yeah. is is uh, is the main influence. So mm. then on the 21st, a few days later, the sun will get to – so at the eclipse, the sun's at 25 of Virgo. Mm -hmm. On the 21st, the sun will get to 28 of Virgo and make the exact opposition to Neptune. So there's a, a few days – of this sense of swimming in this mm. tide, you know, in this oceanic, these oceanic waters. Yeah. While the Virgo part of us is still trying to keep things running and keep things operational. Mm. You know, the other thing about the Virgo Pisces axis, it has a lot to do with spirituality, health and healing and illness and medicine. Mm -hmm. And the Virgo part is is all the, the reality of the day-to-day -day stuff and the Pisces part is the surrender and the letting go and understanding that bigger energies are at play here carrying us through and at the same time we deal with the, the details and the stuff. <sighs> I know. <laughs> I'm getting the weight of that on my shoulders already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, so we're very much in Virgo Pisces energy with this mm -hmm. story. Um, I guess that sigh is just me just letting go. That's right. Yeah. It's a great thing to do to just often how I do it because, you know, I have a busy full life like as you do is so I just come in to hear where my yoga mat is and I just lie. The minute I lie on the floor, mm. I can feel that. Mm. And I slowly start doing some stretches, but there's that feeling of, mm. oh, that's better, and letting the floor hold me so I'm yeah. not holding me. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, on September the 22nd, the sun leaves Virgo mm. and moves into Libra. And that, of course, is our spring equinox. Yes. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> spring has sprung. And it's exactly at 10.43, so it's the evening. Often people assume that happens on the 21st every year, but it can vary. It's the mm. evening of the 22nd. Mm. So that's a powerful energetic time as well, you know, those four corners of the year at the two equinoxes and solstices is all to do with the journey of the sun in relation to the earth and where the sun is sitting on the horizon. So 
you know, the equinox, of course, is day and night are equal. Yeah. Equal balance. And it's zero degrees of Libra is a sign of balance and harmony. harmony equal yeah. Equilibrium. Yeah, sign of loyalty too and um, a genuine desire to please others. But I also think I'd like to say to people is to not com over compromise, don't become a doormat for others because of the strong desire for their approval or affection, which that sun in Libra brings into it, doesn't it? Yes, and th and that that desire for things to always be harmonious. Yes, yeah, and and so the negative side of that can be a tendency to please everybody all the time, so that you keep the peace. Yeah, say things that they want to hear rather than actually speaking up and. That, that's right. Yeah. And, and, of course, that's why Aries is the sign that's opposite Libra. You know, the, the polarities of the signs is so interesting. Yeah. But, well, but I was just going to say, but the beautiful quality of Libra, of course, is its innate ability to create harmony and balance and beauty. Mm. And you'll see that with Librans. You know, everyone's different, but so many Librans just have a natural innate sense of how to create beauty and harmony in their environment in the in the clothes they wear and so on mm, yeah and, and in their relationships with people yeah. yeah going back to that um we and me with the Aries on one side and never on the other is um you know like you were saying the the need to or the, the desire to um to please other people uh you know we sort of become aware of that we shine in other people's company too. And I've always said that I work better in a team. You know, I, I'm at my best when I'm with other people working. Um, by myself, I'm not, I'm not so great. Well, I can be, but I prefer to be in the company of other people. And I think I've actually got a, a strong, um, I've got something up there in Jupiter and Libra. That's what, uh, yes. Yeah. So, I really, uh, yeah, I just shine in that in that environment. Yeah, so that brings out the best in you. It's Jupiter in the mm, sign of Libra. Mm, mm. I was I often think of Jupiter as our superpower, and and you could say that. And so in Libra, it's it's about that relationship connection with people, and yeah. and connecting with people really easily, and people responding to you really well because mm -hmm. it's just what brings you joy and benefit and. But yeah. It can because I love to be with people, also Moon and Gemini. But um, I, I um, I can have social burnout too. Yeah, <laughs> I get <Yeah>. people down. <laughs> yeah, and and Aquarius rising as well. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, the, so the other thing I wanted to say about Libra too is, you know, um, that it can bring on fence sitting. You can't quite make up your mind about or you know make a decision about something. So. You might tend to brood for a while, you know. That's right. That that'll be something we may start to notice as the sun goes into Libra, and then we'll be in Libra for four weeks. We might be having to make choices. Mm. That's often a challenging thing for Librans or people who have a lot of Libra in their chart. Yeah. Because and it's literally this: you're literally weighing up and seeing. Well, I can see the benefit of that choice, and I can see the benefit of this choice. So they do nothing. <laughs> and, and that's that's a common dilemma with that sign. It's even even driving down the street and coming to a T-junction. Oh, was I supposed to go left or was I supposed to go right? There's always being confronted with this choice. And what will be the optimal choice? And, and will I get the choice right? And what happens if I make the wrong choice? And those kinds of issues come up. So we might be, we might experience that in the coming weeks. I think so. We're making we're sort of being put to the test with choices that we make these days, more so. Than we ever. certainly are. Yeah. We certainly are. Mm. That's exactly, and so this period, the spring equinox and the coming weeks, that could come up again. Mm. Um, on the 23rd, the following day, Venus is at 29 degrees of Libra. So Venus has been in Libra the last couple of weeks. So as the sun comes into Libra, Venus departs. So she's kind of moving ahead of the sun. So she gets right to the end. And as she does that, she makes a square with Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn. Yes, yes. 
I'm, and, I, sorry, come. I was going to say, well, she will be in that square aspect for some days, a couple of days before and after, but that's that's when it's exact, and that's a strong story. Yes, definitely, definitely. I'm thinking um, intense undercurrents. <laughs> Very much. About thorny issues that need to come to the surface. Especially in relationship. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because Venus is the primary relationship planet and she rules Libra and coming and when a planet comes to the end of its sign, it always has a bit more intensity. And it's where Pluto, who is the master of intensity. Mm. And so this could be for some people in a relationship situation currently that may not be going well, it's come to a critical point. Mm. This is the kind of transit that can just tip it over the edge and just you know, we've all had moments in our lives where we said about whatever the situation is, that's it, I'm done, I can't do this one more day. Mm. And that might have been building up for weeks, months, even a couple of years, mm. and the moment comes. That's one. This is one of those moments. Mm. Yeah. It, not everyone will be in that situation with a relationship or it could even be a friendship or an association or a co-worker. Um, but it, it can be as very strong you know, Pluto hitting a, a personal planet by a strong aspect like a square, hard square, it hits a critical point, a critical moment. Mm. And so a critical choice must be made. And if you're still sitting on the fence, somehow the choice will be made for you. That's that's the power of an aspect like this. I was thinking because of Venus, it could be to do with finances too, you know. Also. So, so there could be a struggle between... Like in a relationship situation, it could be um, uh, an issue about earning your own income or depending on someone else financially too. Yes, and and that could relate to, say, in a relationship situation, again, when it's hit a critical point, money could well be one of the, the big issues, mm. which is a big, a big issue in relationships, particularly if people... Uh, living together or married and or have shared finances in, or it's a business partnership mm. you bet and um and and like a really deeper core underlying theme here could be around self-worth and self-love like why am I always giving all my power Pluto away to this other person mm. it's revealing to me that I'm not loving and valuing myself nearly enough mm. so it may not even be, in a situation like that, the end of a relationship, but it can be an incredible shift around the power dynamic. Yes, yes. Right? Being a square to do with money or just the relationship itself or both. Yeah. Absolutely. Values being really challenged. Mm, mm. But on the same day, Venus will then, because she's moving fairly quickly, then she'll exit Libra and move into Scorpio. Yeah. And Scorpio is ruled by Pluto. So now she's going even deeper. So Venus will be in Scorpio for about three weeks and that really um, takes us into very deep waters around love, self-love, self-worth, our values, relationships mm. and, and sexuality, mm. you know, uh, sensuality and power and relationship dynamics and money you know because always in Scorpio we're going along in Libra and we hit Scorpio down we go yes right? down through layers yeah to look a lot more deeply at things and a lot of stuff will come up it's a very deep water sign I was I was just looking around for my book I must have put it away but I, I had um oh what's her name um Marita Pottinger's book in her Astro Essentials book uh, and I'll she said Venus and Scorpio can find sharing the sensual, sexual or financial world without overindulgence or denial to be a challenge. Right. <laughs> I thought that's Yeah. Because in Scorpio, and people who have a lot of Scorpio, I'm sure will recognise this, it's all or nothing. Yeah. yeah. It's very intense. It's all, I'm not, you know, this isn't half measures here. Yeah. Um, and... It can be a time of tremendous purification of all Venusian issues for us. And um, 
And, you know, if people know their chart, you can look at what house, which is going through as it goes through Scorpio, because um, that's the area of life. This, But, you know, Venus is also love and beauty and pleasure and enjoyment. Mm. And for some people that can just bring more of that in a, in a deep emotional, perhaps a really sexual way, um, things that bring us more pleasure. Um, yeah. I think, I think getting that balance between all or nothing and give and take, that's for me how it sums it up, you know. Yeah. Yeah, getting that. And when you, when you look at uh, or when you, when you introduce the concept of give and take into relationships, whether they're romantic or friendships or whatever, um, you, you rise above that um, power struggle, don't you? And, and new things can be born in that relationship. That's right. And but in Scorpio, it's quite challenging to be in that state of give and take and compromise. You know, yeah. it is very, it's very strong. And um it just depends on people's situation as to, you know, what's what's actually really required here. Because mm -hmm. Scorpio is about purging and cleaning out mm -hmm. what's been buried in the dark basement for a long time. And mm -hmm. Venus is a very bright star in our sky and she to me represents the light of the heart the love light mm. so at best she can shine her you know when the heart is open scorpio then can open from a very very deep place like the love in scorpio is so deep and profound mm. you know it's that feeling of i i i would die for you kind of yeah. thing yeah you know? So there's always many layers and many perspectives with all of these things, but it can be quite intense emotionally. Yeah. Well, with that Scorpio there, I mean, on a different note, it, it can involve obsessive feelings too. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. It's sort of the sign that it can be very obsessive, absolutely. Yeah, and there's a secrecy around it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Venus might bring some things up, you know, we, with her light, she may actually bring some things to the surface that haven't been seen before or reveal secrets in a relationship. Because, you know, one of the key issues with Scorpio, it's all about trust. Yeah, that's trust right. Trust and betrayals of trust. Yeah. Yeah. And in the end, because Venus is really about our own heart and our own capacity to love, how much are we loving and trusting ourselves and mm. what our own heart is showing us and calling for, you know, mm. and that it, while it's in Scorpio, that can go very deep. So mm. very interesting time, be an interesting one to watch and notice, you know, what we're all experiencing. But it is yeah. a purification. Yeah. I was just thinking when you said, you know, um, with Scorpio about trust, it's a bit, a bit like a shot in the foot really because while you know, there's a reluctant reluctance to trust others. So there's these guards that go up, which actually yeah. stop us from um, our love and our social needs, which Venus wants to bring in. Yeah. 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 See, she she rules Libra, you know, the previous mm. sign. Mm. She's at home there, you know, connecting and sharing with everyone. And in Scorpio, all sorts of stuff can come up. All yeah. sorts of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it is often very difficult for Scorpios and people with a lot of Scorpio to, to trust. You have to earn their trust, often because they might have been very badly burned even in childhood. There might have been extreme mm. betrayals of trust. So mm. often there's reasons for it. Sometimes it's just an, an innate sort of suspiciousness you know, <laughs> that comes with the sign. Oh, well, uh, we'll try not to hold that against them. <laughs> <laughs> um, September the 25th, Mercury coming to the end of Virgo is in opposition to Neptune, more Neptune energy. And then by the following day, Mercury moves into Libra. Yeah. So we'll have Mercury and the sun, which are often in the same sign, traveling through the sign of Libra. So this can be, you know, a nice time for socializing and connecting with people and yeah. a bit of time and energy into our relationship life. 
Well, I also think if we just back it up to that Mercury opposite Neptune, um, I think, you know, it can be communications which have a touch of magic, Yes. you know, uh, which assists and uplifts other people. Yes. Mm. Absolutely. I'm I'm glad you said that. That magic is a really good word, I think, for all of this that we've been talking about with Virgo and Pisces and Neptune. Mm. And it makes me think of these amazing, I know a few, I'm sure you do too, these amazing women who have such a gift with things like herbs and plant medicine, and they're very connected with the with the nature devas and the, the fey realms and they can communicate with plants. That's very Virgo, but it's it's very Pisces Virgo. Yes. It's the, the plants and the healing medicine of the plant world, mm -hmm. but it's the mystical and the magical connection through the Pisces energy as well, Yeah. you know, that yeah. word magic, magical. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, with, the, the fairies and the davers, yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's right. Never have too many fairies. No, God, we need them. Absolutely. You know, with, with that murkiness of Neptune and with Mercury in opposition, it's also about um, um, information getting lost too, you know, um, or we can be confused or absent-minded as well. That's right. Or... Someone gives you a piece of information and it's not correct, either deliberately not correct or they just yeah. got it wrong. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mis mis fiction. Yeah. Miscommunication. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I mean, you'll you'll see in in birth charts around health, you know, medical astrology, astrology speaking, um, often Neptune Pisces, when that's connected to health in a birth chart. It can often represent misdiagnoses and things like that. You know, like they just got it wrong and you got given the wrong medication. Yeah. Right? That that kind of thing can happen. Mm. Um, then on the 30th, the sun makes a conjunction. So the sun and Mercury make a, an exact conjunction. I haven't got the exact degree of that, but it will be in um, the early degrees of Libra. Mm. Um, and that's called, uh, as you're aware, a Kazemi, like the, the old technical term for it is Kazemi when Mercury and the Sun join together. And it's an interesting thing because traditionally it's regarded that Mercury is weakened because it's burning up in the light and the heat of the Sun. Mm. And yet I have found with people with close Mercury-Sun conjunctions they're often very powerful communicators. Yeah. You know, yeah. and communication is like a major theme in their life. Um, well, I think that would magnify the clarity in their thinking. Yeah. And their focus. Yeah. That's right. So, so the mind has a lot of energy there from the sun. Um, so, But there could be in the world some very interesting communications. Libra is also about law and legal matters too. That's true. Justice, true. injustice, all of those things. But, you know, if we're going to do some public speaking, it's 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 a good energy um, to help us articulate our ideas and express them with precision, isn't it? Because I, you hear some speakers sometimes that are all over the place, but this is very, um, very precise and, and clear. Yes. Yeah. So the sun's giving a lot of energy to Mercury and Mercury's, you know, giving energy to the sun as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then that leads us into early October on October the 3rd. Third, the new moon, which of course is a solar eclipse, and it's at ten degree uh, ten degrees of Libra. And oh, we have some interesting things to say about that next time because <laughs> it's what an it. I'll just speak what it is. Mm. I can actually see it here. I printed out the chart. South node is at six degrees of Libra. Sun and the moon, the new moon is at 10 degrees conjunct. The black moon, Lilith, at 10 degrees conjunct. Mercury at 11 degrees. Wow. I know. All in the sign of Libra, the sign of peace, harmony, balance, relationships, justice, law. Yeah. Very in, there's a lot of interesting energy going on in that combination. Well. Wow. Everyone's just going to have to tune in at the next episode. Well, they are. <laughs> so they absolutely are. 
hit that subscribe button right now if you haven't done it already and click all because you want to get all the notifications so you can find out about what that's all about. Right. Yeah, yeah. And just, just a quick leap ahead on October the 9th, you can't help yourself, day. can you? <laughs> I can't help myself. Uh, only two big things happen. Jupiter turns retrograde and you, and Pluto turns direct at 29 degrees 38. And Pluto turning direct at 29 degrees 38 minutes of Capricorn is the beginning of Pluto absolutely ending his long journey through the sign of Capricorn. Mm. And it's the same day that Jupiter turns direct. And then, as we know, on November the 20th, Pluto exits Capricorn. Yeah. Very interesting. Oh, that'll be good. I hope. <laughs> yes, that's right. Because there's always a downside to everything too. There is. Especially with Pluto, you've got to look at the dark and the light of it. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, that's that was a lot of information, but it's really interesting to hear this a lot happening, you know, in succession. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There is, and it's all building up to some very interesting shifts coming in next year. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll wow. have plenty to keep talking about, Cheryl. Oh, my gosh, I, I never think that we, I don't even think that we ever will stop talking. No, we just keep going. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, I think January will be year four for us. It'll be our fourth anniversary. Yes. Okay. How about that? Wow. Great. Which only goes to show that the planets keep turning. <laughs> they do. They do not stop. They keep telling their cosmic tales. So, everyone, if you enjoyed that, please remember to click like, uh, subscribe, and if you feel so, you know, so inclined, please share with your astrology friends. And, um, yeah, look, we'll be back in another couple of weeks to talk about the next lunar cycle. So thank you, Babula, for everything. All that You're welcome. And uh, we will see you soon. So bye. bye.